high value woman and average is a contradiction because you can't be a top tier high value woman and be average at the same time but i'm guessing you don't want to be average because that's why you clicked on this video average women are normal they are like the 99 percent of women they allow disempowering behavior into their reality they engage in disempowering behavior they pour into other people's cups first and they neglect themselves and if you act like the 99 percenters you will continue to feel unsatisfied you will live a very mediocre life because when you engage in low value 99 percenter kind of behavior that's what you become that is what exists in your reality high value women are selfish no one is going to tell you this about high value women they are selfish gatekeepers and if you want to become a high value woman you are going to need to do the same they are selfish with their time they are selfish with their energy their focus and their emotion the media has presented this high value woman trend as disempowering to women but when you really analyze the crux of it you will realize that these women are just charging an extremely high entry fee into their ecosystem into their bubble so think of it as just charging an entry fee into your energy into your space your focus your time your emotion just like when you go to a certain type of bar at a certain time they will charge a cover fee to get it in five or ten dollars depending on what kind of bar you're going to but they will charge you a fee and you have to pay that fee and then you can get let in so as i go through this video and share my four phase blueprint on becoming a high value woman i want you to ponder on this question what is your cover fee once you learn the blueprint and then you apply the blueprint you will realize that you must charge an extremely high price because of all the effort and investment you are going to be doing to yourself to ensure that you are a top tier woman when i say high level woman i'm not talking about like a high level achiever i'm talking about a woman who is at the highest level emotionally spiritually mentally and physically while we're going through your blueprint i want you to pull up pinterest and start making a vision board so that you can feel inspired as soon as this video is done you can start taking action phase number one is emotional you have to get your emotions in check you cannot be out here getting triggered 24 7 crying over meaningless nonsense and trying to fight every single person that says something you don't like now sometimes it can be difficult we have to give ourselves a free pass especially around our cycle because i'm guilty of this i'm sure you might be guilty of this we are a little bit more testy on our cycle so free pass granted. However, this cannot be your dominant 24-7 temperament. You cannot be an emotional wreck 24-7 because that is not cute. Top tier women work on dominating their dominant triggers and they do this every single day until it becomes part of their lifestyle. So this is the secret formula they use and I'm going to share it with you. T-D-R-R-A. Trigger, deep breath, reflect, release, action. When you are triggered, you are going to allow yourself to be triggered. You are going to put yourself in positions that trigger you. Why are you going to do this? Because then you build a tolerance to your trigger. You can't avoid situations and environments that trigger you because the world is not set up for you and your triggers. So what you have to do is build a tolerance to them and strengthen your immunity to them. And you do this by actively putting yourself in situations that trigger you, which then moves me on to step number two, which is taking a deep breath. Whenever you're in a situation that has triggered you, you don't just act instinctively on whatever you're feeling because that's just chaos. And we learned about emotional control in that video. So watch it next. But instead you take a deep breath, pull your emotions back and I know this is so hard to do but you pull your emotions back you wait and you take a step back from this situation you don't react instinctively on first primary emotion that's coming up then you take all of this information that you've gathered during this triggering session and you go to your room a safe space wherever that is for you and you reflect upon it why did that trigger me why did I have that instinctual reaction why that reaction specifically I wanted to fight this person I wanted to yell at this person I wanted to hurt that person why did I want to do that what would I have gained from reacting like that what was my automatic response to that trigger sit with it reflect on it and then release it this is something i never used to do i used to just reflect and then spiral myself into this oh my god why are you so awful no we have to reflect but then we have to do that with non-judgment and compassion so that we can release it and let it go because high value women aren't in this rabbit hole of i gotta just be perfect they're in a mindset of every day i'm getting better by one percent if i got triggered yesterday i'm gonna try to not get triggered tomorrow just taking 
steps into that is 10 times better than not doing anything at all and not even realizing your triggers and two realizing your triggers and then just creating a negative feedback loop and constantly grilling yourself you will be at an absolute disadvantage if you consistently let yourself get triggered and react to every single bs thing that is coming on your path because trust me life will throw you bs and if you consistently respond and react in an unfavorable way to you you are going to lead yourself into an unfavorable reality you have to get your emotional world in check why when you don't you literally hand people a playbook on how to destroy you on how to manipulate you on how to take advantage of you you are saying this is what triggers me this is what causes an extreme reaction in me this is how you'll get me out of my peace take it use it against me people are going to take it with no hesitation they are going to do that think about the billion dollar industries created on consumer emotions because emotions drive human behavior why would it not be the same in your life think of this in a micro sense your daily life people are going to use your emotions whether they know it or not consciously or unconsciously to their advantage now showing emotion is extremely valuable when done correctly when done with a sense of control like in a dating dynamic when you are getting to know somebody it's critical that you show emotion and you show vulnerability that is the only way that you are going to connect with somebody and they are going to feel like you are showing reciprocal interest so you show your emotion but then you take it back that's controlling your emotions show your emotions in situations that are warranting of your emotions that are warranting the vulnerability and then you pull it back when it's no longer necessary you don't run around life 24 7 in every situation with your emotions all over your body like plastered on you as makeup as your clothes as your hair you use your emotions when valuable purposefully because in the dating dynamic specifically you don't want to be this emotional roller coaster because a man will feel burdened by this and suffocated rather than feel excited and interested because you're showing vulnerability now the emotional phase also requires you to build a genuine personality a warm personality an inviting personality empathy compassion the ability to listen to others and understand them and connect with them that is the personality that is really going to shine high value women have these traits really at the forefront of their personality because they make such a big difference in connecting to others people feel seen they feel heard in your presence and that keeps them coming back to your presence there is so much confidence and eloquence to a woman who knows who they are knows their vision knows that they're confident knows that they're good looking but it's packaged up in this box of humility like i know i'm all those things but i'm also still a very kind person i'm a very warm person i'm very generous i'm very empathetic i listen i hear you i'm compassionate i'm understanding that is a high value woman she's not this woman who looks really good and is so full of her and just like oh I'm the bee's knees phase number two is spiritual this is my favorite phase it is the thing that is going to make you ooze juiciness and I know nobody likes that word but I love that word you got to be just juicy and your soul curating a beautiful soul giving attention to your soul is literally the key to attracting anything you want in your life being the most magnetic person getting the life of your dreams so we got to make sure the inner world the soul is living in a really nice place that it wants to be we have to build a connection to our soul so that we're not just relying on our lizard brain our ego and the physical human version of ourselves because there's a whole soul inside of us that is giving us guidance in our life that is giving us the keys and the golden map so it's important that we build a relationship with our soul we learn from eastern cultures that we are more than just our physical body while our physical body is the vehicle our soul is using to navigate this human life this human world we have to take it further than that we can't just rely on those things we can't just rely on our human mind to really have the best out of this human experience we have to tap into our soul so what does our soul need what does our soul want high value women are incredibly spiritual they're very dialed in to whatever they believe in god source the universe start honing in on that you need to use prayer every single day not just when you want something or that when you're begging like please give me a miracle take time every single day to connect to yourself which I'm gonna get into how you're gonna do that but also connecting to the higher power that you believe in when you connect to your higher power you're also connecting to yourself we are all an extension of the higher power so we have that power within ourselves which is our higher self but then we also have that connection directly to 
source. I call this like setting an appointment with spirit. I'm very spiritual, so I say spirit universe, where every day I spend 20 to 30 minutes praying, meditating so that I'm connecting to myself, and I spend that time expressing gratitude. These three things single-handedly have changed my life. Express gratitude for the things that you already have and learn to want the things that you already have. Learn to want to have a drink of water. You get to have that experience in life. You get to just go to your kitchen and have a drink of water. Learn to love that. Learn to be grateful for that. Find what works for you, what connects you to yourself the most efficiently and that you will be consistent with, and then what connects you to source. Every single day, set an appointment with yourself and source, and you will see your life dramatically change. High value women have strong values and beliefs. They are very much traditional in that sense. They have strong family values. They have very curious set of beliefs they stand for something and this is important for you to explore within your own soul you really have to figure out where your place is in this world what you stand for what values you hold because ultimately that's driving you that motivates you when you have a huge why you have to have a strong set of values and beliefs so really tap into your soul and figure out what makes you what drives you and what you are looking for to build in your own life like what do you want out of life Phase number three is physical. This is where we really need to talk because you and so many other women feel guilty about the physical part. The part that comes to your appearance, the looking good part, the pouring into your visual aesthetics. But why? It's literally on par with one of the biggest, highest, top tier forms of self-love. You have to create a maintenance routine that is tailored toward building up your visual aesthetics. Having a signature look for yourself. So a signature signature hairstyle, a signature makeup look, signature nail color that goes with all of your outfits that is tailored to your specific hand shape. You have to find your look and when you find your look, you'll feel so much better about yourself. So an aspect of this phase is habits and routines. Get into a habit of moving your body, walks, Pilates, yoga, low impact cardio, those types of things to really start getting yourself into exercise. High value women have routines. They have habits that are helpful for them. They take care of their internal health and their external health. Right now, we're gonna focus on the external part. So looking your best physically, getting to the gym, getting outside, getting some sort of movement that is going to be essential in your high value woman glow up journey it's just a non-negotiable in this journey you have to have an exercise routine second aspect in phase number three is getting comfortable with your sexuality getting comfortable with your sensuality i practice this by literally staring at myself naked in the mirror dancing around naked doing some major twerk sessions with some really hype music on you have to get comfortable with your sexuality with your sensuality stop feeling shame around your body touch your body make sure that you are like one with your body you're connected to yourself this is so much of feminine energy being connected to your body feeling comfortable with it and that's when you can really embrace and ooze that sexual energy that seductive siren vibe phase number four is mental having an ego death my ego is somewhere tied up in a random basement and i have not checked on her in years because she didn't serve me she protected me once she didn't serve me after we are not running from tigers we are in the modern world and so lock your ego up put her in a basement somewhere and don't check on her she's not very useful sometimes she might come out here and there if you are really in danger but she's not really necessary for the mental phase i really want to focus on building a wealth of knowledge upstairs your emotions are in control we've connected with ourselves and source we have taken care of the appearance but now we have to take care of our mind what value do we bring i say this so many times in my videos what value are you bringing to conversations you need to have a breath of knowledge up here and bring it out in certain instances. This means that you can be adaptable. You can talk to anybody, anywhere, anytime because you have so much knowledge that you will pull from it in certain instances when certain things are necessary. You do this by reading, putting yourself in certain situations so that you have experience with that thing. Another big thing that has helped me tremendously is getting out of your comfort zone 
push yourself, get into the uncomfortability, build resilience to uncomfortable situations. Literally go out there and embarrass yourself just because. Go out there, get rejected because it's so necessary. Build a tolerance to uncomfortable situations. It will be the best thing that you ever did for yourself. It was the best thing that I ever did for myself. I have struggled with anxiety and I was never able to do anything. I turned down so many things because of anxiety. But in the last year, I have done incredible things for my comfort zone. I've hopped on phone calls. I've hopped on sales calls. I built this business. I packed up my entire apartment and moved to the States for a month and a half. I'm packing up again and moving somewhere else. Like I am doing so many things that actually scare me and terrify me, but I've persisted and I've done them. And because now I've done so many of them, things are just exciting now. It's not this scary big thing. It's an exciting thing that like, wow, my life is amazing. That brings me to say you have to have a growth mindset versus a victim mindset. Victims are very much something doesn't go their way. Oh my God, see, this is why I don't do that. But the world is just not favored to me. I'm not built for this. I'm never going to be able to do this. It's not as easy for me as it is for other people. Growth mindset people say, I suck today. I'll suck a little less tomorrow. It doesn't mean I'll suck the entire time. It just means this is something new that I've started. And that brings me back to say, when you're building your skills, your listening skills, your speaking skills, you're growing your bank of knowledge upstairs, you are not going to be this super genius overnight. Have a goal and take steps toward that goal every single day. You build mental strength, mental resilience. Don't be a victim anymore. Victims are not cute. They are never going to get anywhere in their life because they truly believe that somebody is coming to save them. Whether that is a man, whether that's a friend, a family member, a stranger, they think there's a savior out there and they're just waiting and praying for that person to come. It's never going to come. You are not that way. You have a growth mindset. You are going to have a vision. That's why I said get your Pinterest board out, create a vision, see it every single day, and take daily steps to becoming that vision, to merging with that vision. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe. Check out the links in my description box, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!